tonight, Virgin grounded. The struggling airline runs out of time as it prepares to be placed into voluntary administration. Praise for the WA community as our state's COVID-19 infections stall. I know it's tough and I know it can be lonely, but we are winning this battle together. Angst over a government app designed to trace coronavirus. Fears unemployment could skyrocket to 15% once the job subsidy spend runs out. And the new service helping elderly and vulnerable West Australians get essentials during the pandemic. This is 10 News First, Perth, with Monica Koss. Hello again. Virgin could become Australia's first corporate collapse brought on by the coronavirus pandemic. For more, let's cross to Claire Dirl at Perth Airport. Claire, what is the latest? Well, Monica, Virgin Australia is yet to confirm or release this statement, but we've been told the airline has gone into voluntary administration the after this afternoon, leaving around 16,000 jobs in limbo. Like you said, it is the first major corporate collapse of the COVID-19 crisis. The airline was struggling with around $5 billion in debt. They'd requested a $1.4 billion bailout from the federal government, but the bailout was rejected. It's understood corporate accountancy firm Deloitte will be appointed as administrators in the coming days to oversee the sale of the company. The news has sparked fears the cost of air travel could soon skyrocket if Qantas becomes Australia's monopoly airline. So a lot of uncertainty tonight and thousands of jobs in limbo with the collapse of Virgin Australia. Mon. Thanks, Claire. Claire Doyle at Perth Airport there. There are further signs we are winning the battle against COVID-19, with WA recording no new cases overnight. But as more people recover from the virus, parents say they still fear sending their kids back to school. For the first time in more than a month. Western Australia has no new cases of COVID-19 to report. Another milestone in WA's battle against coronavirus. This is an outstanding result, one we can all be very proud of. Overnight, nine coronavirus patients recovered, meaning of our 545 total infections, there are now just 103 active cases in WA. I know it's tough and I know it can be lonely, but we are winning this battle together. I know it's easy to think that we've succeeded and we can just get back to normal, but we need to continue to be very cautious. We cannot get complacent. A warning which isn't lost on teachers or doctors who fear it's too early for students to safely return to school. But the biggest problem for schools is the lack of space and the lack of classrooms uh, for that distancing to occur. It's a big concern for me that all of a sudden we're just releasing the shackles straight away so several hundred thousand kids can go back to school at once. Despite this, the state government is adamant face-to-face -face classes will recommence next week. The children don't stay in a desk. That's, it's not feasible. They need to get up. They need to walk around. That's why the only group of students that we have actively encouraged to attend are the Year 11 and 12s. Temporary alcohol restrictions limiting takeaway sales have also been lifted, removed less than a month after being imposed. There were people that were buying liquor like toilet paper uh, and that gave us great concern. The advice I've got from the police commanders are that uh, there are no difficulties at present. All other restrictions remain in place, but exempt workers travelling between regions can now cross border checkpoints faster with the release of a new digital app. We've already had an overwhelming response over the weekend as part of a soft launch, with more than 8,000 applications from industry. Nathan Brooks for 10 News First. A Perth doctor who worked with hundreds of Australians in hotel quarantine says they're being treated like prisoners. Dr Julie Manasse also says health workers were exposed to high-risk patients without protective equipment, but the state government says that's not the case. Dr Julie Manasa was part of a critical team formed three weeks ago. The Perth GP says she found herself in charge of 600 people in isolation across two Perth hotels, but has slammed the treatment of those returning from overseas. 
They were basically treated, in my opinion, like prisoners of war or criminals. The doctor is no longer part of the team, but claims some travellers were released early without approval, while others were forced to stay, although their mental health was rapidly deteriorating. She also claims in the first week, frontline staff weren't given personal protective equipment, despite being exposed to high-risk patients. Um, my understanding is that PPE was available in the appropriate level at the appropriate level at all times. If there was some stumbling blocks in the early stages, we were learning at that particular point in time and I think it's been an outstanding operation. Since March 26, WA hotels have taken on more than 2,400 guests. Of those, 105 returned positive tests were close contacts of infected passengers or are still waiting for test results. Without those, 105 people could have potentially infected many more. The health department says anyone who's left hotel quarantine on medical grounds has been given approval by a doctor and they have to continue self-isolation at home. Uh, there were some people who released early on compassionate grounds but only under medical advice. The AMA says Dr Manasse's claims need to be thoroughly investigated independently. Lee Steele for 10 News First. Former Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce today ramped up his attacks on his own government's plans to track COVID-19. He's opposed to a smartphone app that could trace who people come into contact with, and he's not alone. He's always ferociously guarded his privacy, although not always successfully. I don't want the government to know so much about my life. Barnaby Joyce is talking about the government's new smartphone app, which is aimed at tracking down people who might have come in contact with someone who has tested positive to COVID-19. Whether or not you know the person. Yeah, I'm refusing to download it and I'm totally within my rights because it's uh, not compulsory. Curiously, the Labor Party even supports the app, but not the former Deputy Prime Minister. It's like someone following you with a notebook, writing down who you're talking to and how long you've spoken to them for. Well, I think most Australians like me aren't too concerned concerned uh, where Barnaby is. Barnaby's concerned that, that someone is tracking or surveilling him. That's not the case. The app is expected to be available in the next couple of weeks and while it's not mandatory, Australians are being encouraged to get on board. I honestly don't think that there's a significant privacy issue here. It will use Bluetooth rather than geolocation technology. It'll only capture that information and hold it on your phone for up to 21 days and then the data disappears. This is all about uh, seeing who you've been in contact with, not where you are. But not everyone's convinced. The reality is that ultimately, once you have four pieces of information, you have the capacity to, uh, about 90, to identify about 90% of uh, the individuals who are, are utilising that. To put minds at ease, the federal government says it will publicly explain exactly how the app works ahead of its release. But before that happens, the National Cabinet will meet again tomorrow to look at possibly lifting restrictions on elective surgery and dental work. Amber Austin Wright for 10 News First. Europe has passed a grim milestone in the battle against COVID-19, recording more than 100,000 official deaths. There are some glimmers of hope, but in the worst affected places, including the UK, it appears the crisis is far from over. From the empty streets of Paris to a deserted Rome, it's unlikely the Europe we know will ever be the same. More than 100,000 lives officially lost across the continent to COVID-19. Tens of thousands more have also perished without their deaths being recorded in a crisis racing faster than governments can handle it. Thankfully, Spain has joined Italy in showing signs of improvement. It's recorded its lowest daily death toll in a month. In the UK, there are some stories of hope. This man with Down syndrome was given 24 hours to live. Now he's been reunited with his mother. And at a site that once held Olympic events, a victory of a different kind. A farewell to the first patient to recover from COVID-19 in London's largest temporary hospital. We're, we're immensely proud to have played our part in saving Mr Chung's life. 
Amid the individual tales of hope is the reality of a crisis overwhelming a nation. More than 16,000 people have died in hospitals from COVID-19 here in the UK, even more in nursing homes. Medics are dying because there's not enough protective gear to keep them safe. And until the situation is under control, over 70s may be housebound for a year. That's why Prince Harry has been criticised for saying this. It can be very, very worrying when you're sitting there and the only sort of information you're getting is from certain uh, news channels. But then if, you, if you're out and about uh, or you're on the right platforms, you can really sense this, this human spirit coming to the forefront. There's no doubt the human spirit is high in the UK, but so is the scale of this crisis. Phoebe Bowden for 10 News First, London. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has announced New Zealand will lift its Level 4 lockdown in seven days. Level 3 will come in at midnight next Monday. People will continue working and learning from home where possible, practising social distancing at workplaces that remain open and exercising locally. While the nation's coronavirus transmission rate remains one of the lowest in the world, Ardern urged people to remain vigilant and get tested quickly if experiencing symptoms. Stark new research suggests Australia's jobless rate will climb as high as 15% as businesses struggle well beyond the six-month wage subsidy scheme. The Grattan Institute wants the government to commit to another stimulus package to avoid a depression. Victoria Pateman runs a successful beauty salon in Melbourne with five employees and 130 clients per week. But on March 25, the salon was forced to close and 95% of earnings were lost literally overnight. Well, a couple of weeks you could probably cope with, you know, you could still stay afloat. Um, but as the time goes on, the, you know, you're not, you haven't got clients, you haven't got money coming in. Her business is eligible for JobKeeper, but the new mum fears she may not be able to pay staff beyond that. The clients might not be able to come back because they've lost their jobs as well. Um, people may not be spending because they'll be wary and they'll have loans much like we will as well. That and the fact many industries have closed altogether are among the reasons the Grattan Institute warns Australia's jobless rate is likely to reach 15%. And unless you're actually looking for work, you're not going to be shown, you don't show up in the unemployment statistics. So the true rate of joblessness will be higher than the unemployment numbers that the government has has uh, forecast. Hospitality and the arts have been worst hit, with more than half their employees out of work and no clear end in sight. For the economy to recover beyond this pandemic, people need to feel confident in spending their money. The measure of this is called consumer confidence, which at the moment is at an historic low. Right now, it's at minus 30. That's twice as bad as during the worst moments of the global financial crisis and even worse than the recession of the early 90s. This is a recession that Australia had to have. It took eight years for the unemployment rate to fall back to the level it was pre-crisis. And that's a situation where you need to work really hard to avoid this time around. Georgia Love for 10 News First. For some, the simple task of buying groceries can be a big undertaking. It's even more challenging during a pandemic. Now a free delivery service has launched, helping vulnerable West Australians get everything they need. Shopping centres have become intimidating places for vulnerable Australians. If I can stay away from the shops, if I don't have to go to the shops, I'm not going. It's safer. It is much safer to stay home. But Cahoots Connects, a new essential service, launched today, offering free home delivery of groceries for vulnerable West Australians. The people that are trapped in their home and experiencing uh, isolation, maybe having mental health concerns or living with disability and not able to access the services that are available, this will be life-saving. For Andrew, who is physically disabled, the initiative will help his whole family. I have a 30-year-old son with an intellectual disability, but I also have an 86-year-old mother. Um, so we fit into the vulnerable category across the board. The free service delivers groceries the next day to eligible Aussies, who can pay for their groceries online or at the door. Those able to use the service include people with disabilities and mental health conditions, older Australians and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. The initiative launched just today and has already received over 100 expressions of interest. Volunteers will hit the shops today and start home deliveries tomorrow. Cahoots is funded by the state government and aims to keep not only vulnerable Aussies, but all of us safe. It's going to help to alleviate and flatten the curve and to keep that curve flat. Those wanting to apply can call or visit the Cahoots website. Brendan Crew for 10 News First. 
Tim Gossage is here now with a preview of Monday Night Sport. More drama for Rugby League. Yeah, not going well at all. Just when all sport around the world needs stability in these tough times, the NRL has lost its chief executive. Meanwhile, the AFL is strong at the top. We get their update from Gillan McLaughlin. Also, he wasted no time rushing back to Adelaide, but Eagles Premiership star Jack Redden is waiting to be called back to Perth. Prepare for a season restart. And when you're searching for a player of the day, you can always rely on good old baseball to get us to home plate. Monday Night Sport, you know what it is. It's the best night of sport of the week. <gasps> How did I know you were going to say that? Thanks, Tim. <laughs> After the break on 10. Vandal attack. Children arrested for trashing a WA memorial. And marking 10 years since the biggest goldfields earthquake ever recorded. The biggest ravenous punters. <laughs> Master Chef Barbecue ever. Oh my gosh. It is absolute mayhem. <laughs> Alarm bells are starting to sound. It's too Last... slow. Yeah. I know, mate. I'm trying to get it going here, mate. I warned you about this. But will this epic challenge eat them alive? The way that your service goes all relies on the next 10 minutes. I'm worried for you, mate. Have you got anything cooked? MasterChef, 7.30 tonight on 10. Being stuck at home doesn't have to mean being stuck for things to do. Because if you take a look around, there's inspiration everywhere. Ryobi One Plus. One Plus U equals endless possibilities. Available at bunnings.com.au. Have you filed a claim for compensation for a car or work accident injury? Do you know how much you deserve and what your outstanding claim is worth? Phone solicitor Simon Walters for your free initial consultation now. Quit having to hide from your kids. Quit the expense. Quit coughing. Quit running out of breath. Quit always saying you're going to quit. Quit smoking and you quit all the crap that goes with it. You quit, you win. Even though we need to stay inside, we can still keep moving. Even when you're not outside, you can still move like you are. Because even when space is limited, you can still move without limits. Aaron is a business broker who works from home. Because he's mostly at home day and night, he could pay less on his home and contents insurance. Yui, it's home and contents insurance for individuals like Aaron. Yui, you insured. At Domino's, our first priority is the health and safety of our team members and customers. That's why we are now offering zero contact delivery. So you can get any large pizza from $15 delivered with total peace of mind. Right now, our Anzac spirit is more important than ever. At the going down of the sun. And in the morning. Let's we forget. Husey, you've got a very big problem. My oh, husband hates yes. Husey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you hate him. Yeah, why? Right. Is it his voice? He puts on this um, Aussie Aussie guy Bogan persona every time he talks. Uh, <laughs> Lisa, this is for you. I think it's the only answer. It's a divorce agreement. <laughs> what does the bottom say, Lisa? Tick here to divorce a guy who doesn't understand classic humour. Oh. The season finale of Husey We Have a Problem on 10. Catch Husey's last laugh tonight. A wild brawl spilled onto a street south of Perth. Police say weapons were involved in the confrontation. Two men are recovering in hospital. Amelia Simpson has the details. Monica, police say poles, bats and other weapons were used in the brawl which left a 26-year-old man in hospital with a fractured skull as well as his 23-year-old brother with cuts to his head and arm. It erupted just before six yesterday evening when it's alleged a group of men confronted people inside a Mackay Street home. 
Neighbours have told 10 News First they heard yelling and screaming and saw a group of people fighting in front of the property. They say car windows were smashed before the brawl spilled onto the street. Neighbours, many of them elderly, called police. They say at one point a man was being stomped on as he lay on the ground. Police say the men who started the confrontation were more seriously injured. Three were taken to Peel Health Campus, but the two brothers were hurt so badly they then had to be transferred to Royal Perth. Police and forensic officers remained at the scene for around 12 hours. They seized mobile phones and arrested two people. Monica, police say they're now speaking to a total of 10 people they believe were involved in the brawl, but they're also urging anyone who knows more to come forward. A two-year joint operation between Australia and the US investigating online child abuse material has resulted in the arrest of 16 people across the country. It sprang from a website where users paid to access the material. Officers here swooped on the suspects, laying more than 700 charges and removing eight children from harm. They say it shows COVID-19 restrictions don't impact the ability of law enforcement to investigate cross-country criminal networks. The corruption watchdogs cleared an internal police investigation over the arrest of a 13-year-old boy. It happened in February 2018. Officers responded to reports the boy was smashing up the reception area of a Department of Communities office. During the confrontation, the boy swung at one officer and was arrested. It was reported to the Triple C after a magistrate raised concerns over how the boy was handled. The officers involved were later disciplined, but no criminal charges were laid. Four children are accused of vandalising a war memorial in Carnarvon. Police managed to clean most of the graffiti, but it will need specialised attention before Anzac Day. That is obviously a, a very disturbing thing for all Australians, and particularly veterans, to uh, learn of a war memorial being desecrated uh, and damaged. The children, the youngest just 11, will be charged with criminal damage at a later date. Today marks 10 years since a massive quake rocked the gold fields and damaged multiple buildings across Kalgoorlie. The magnitude 5 quake hit just after 8 in the morning and at a depth of 1.7 kilometres below Boulder. It left a trail of destruction through the city and many heritage listed buildings were damaged. Nobody was injured but it remains the strongest quake to ever hit the region. Michael Schultz is here with a look ahead to weather. We have a gloomy week ahead, actually. Yeah, there's not a lot happening, but there's not nothing happening, if you know what I mean. It's going to be cloudy. We're going to be in westerlies for the next couple of days. There's a few very weak cold fronts that are going to move along the southern coastline, so there's just the chance the tail of one or two of those will reach the metropolitan area at some stage. Today we got to a top of 24.4 degrees at half past one. The overnight minimum was 10.3 at 20 past six this morning. It got to 25 at Lancelin today. Bullsbrook and Swan Valley also 25 but a cool morning with 9 degrees at Guildford and Jandicott and 8 this morning at Dwelling Up. For the state the lowest minimum was 4 degrees that was at Newdigate and Wandering. Lowest maximum was 19 close to Perth at Carnet and 41 was the highest maximum in the North Kimberley at Wyndham. On the satellite you can see a moisture source off the northwest coast that's dragging some isolated showers through the mining and pastoral areas and you can also see those weak cold fronts. Another one through tonight, tomorrow See you at five to six. Until then, ahead on 10 News. Canada mourns. A dentist unleashes the worst mass shooting in the country's history. And frustration boils over as the coronavirus death toll rises in the US. Eat them alive. I'm worried for you, mate. Have you got anything cooked? MasterChef, 7.30 tonight. It is the heart of the home. It's the heart of our family. It's the heart of our social life. We need it to last a long time, and that's where quality comes in. Every kitchen is different. Every size is different. So we have such a great range here. It's a, a nice feeling to walk into a brand new kitchen. We definitely make the whole process affordable and easy. So from start to finish, Bunnings makes it super easy to get your state-of-the-art kitchen for your budget. So to create the amazing look without the big prices, beautiful kitchens at an affordable price that look amazing. It's a difficult time for Aussie families right now. And this is true of our Subway family too. We can't change what's happening, but we can bring you a little something fresh, tasty and Australian grown to take your mind off things. 
And when we do, you'll know that your family is helping Aussie farmers, local communities, and one of the thousands of small business owners across Australia. So thank you from our family to yours. Getting reliable, accurate information has never been more important. Now, for just a dollar a day for eight weeks, you can have the newspaper delivered every day and get full digital access to our website, The West Australian. When was the last time you washed your hands? Go on. In 20 seconds, you can help reduce the spread of infection. We don't care which soap you use. We care that you care for you and for all. Dove. Ole was put to the ultimate MRI test. The MRI proved Ole intensely hydrates your skin for a plumper, firmer and more radiant glow. See the results in 28 days. Ole. No matter how they sleep, take comfort that Huggies newborn nappies with Huggies dry touch layer quickly absorbs runny poos. And our super soft outer cover provides our best care for your newborn's delicate skin. Huggies, be comfortable in your skin. Let me tell you about Fairy from the world's number one dish care company. For stuck on grease, just spray Fairy Easy Spray and grease melts away. For hand washing, Fairy dishwashing liquid lifts off tough grease before your eyes. And for your dishwasher, Fairy Platinum Plus beats finished quantum at cleaning stuck on food on the first wash. Try it like I did. Switch to Fairy from the world's number one dish care company. As coronavirus continues, it's vital that we support our older Australians. So keep in contact regularly with older neighbours, friends or family. Set them up to use technology, then plan a regular time to connect. Cook a meal and leave it at their front door or offer to run errands. You could drop a note in their mailbox or chat over the fence. Together, we can help stop the spread and stay healthy. To find out more, visit australia.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Chef's biggest barbecue ever. I'm worried for you, mate. Eat them alive tonight. Canada is in mourning tonight after suffering its worst mass shooting in history. At least 17 people were murdered by a dentist dressed up as a police officer who then went on the run for 12 hours. This Two police so cars burn on the side of a highway. They're dragging a melt, look, they're dragging somebody. Oh my God. As the shooter, come arsonist, escapes police again during a 12-hour killing spree a short time later at a petrol station. They got the killer right here. Oh, they got him, but they shot him. I heard the four shots. Canada's deadliest mass shooting is finally brought to an end. Police killing the suspect. Today is a devastating day for Nova Scotia, and it will remain etched in the minds of many for years to come. This is the unsuspecting face of evil, 51-year-old dentist Gabriel Waterman. So many ways for people to get dentures. Police believe he started with a clear motive, murdering several people in a house before midnight last night, but then it turned into a random killing spree across several towns. One line of inquiry is whether the coronavirus lockdown played a role. Among the dead, Constable Heidi Stevenson, a 23-year veteran of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and mother of two. Earlier this afternoon, I met with Heidi's family and there are no words to describe their pain. During the shooting, residents in Nova Scotia hid in basements. It's just something that I never ever expect to happen here, this close to home. Adding to the confusion, Waterman dressed up as a police officer and drove a fake police car. He also set fire to several of the crime scenes. My hearts go out to everyone affected in what is a terrible situation. Like here in America, gun ownership in Canada is relatively common, but mass shootings are much rarer. In fact, the closest incident to happen to today's mass shooting occurred in 1989 when a gunman shot dead 14 women in Montreal. Now today's rampage will take its place in the dark chapters of Canadian history as a nation under coronavirus lockdown watched every step unfold on television. Restrictions that thankfully meant there were fewer targets out on the streets, perhaps the only silver lining on one of Canada's darkest days. Eamon Ashton Atkinson for 10 News First.
Frustration is growing in the US as more states try to balance increasing calls to reopen with public safety. While the death toll has climbed past 40,000, infections are going down and the focus in some areas is turning to rebuilding. A direct appeal to a son of the city. Are you going to save New York City or are you telling New York City to drop dead? Which one is it? A clearly frustrated mayor of New York playing rough with the president. What's going on? Cat got your tongue? You're usually really talkative. Authorities may be slowly getting on top of the coronavirus outbreak, but there are still desperate shortages of vital equipment. And with eyes now turning to the recovery, a desperate shortage of money as well. The federal government was very quick to bail out the auto industry. How about bailing out the nation's largest city? How about bailing out the epicenter of this crisis where people have been suffering? I just got off the phone with the Secretary of the Treasury. And we have some very good negotiations going on right now. And uh, I think you could have a nice answer tomorrow, but we'll see. Promising signs in New York's virus numbers too, but they come with a warning from the governor. It's no time to get cocky and it's no time to get arrogant, right? We still have a lot, long way to go and a lot of work to do. Frustrated with that amount of work and sacrifice, thousands of Americans spent another day protesting. It's the flu. The people who have poor health are always the most vulnerable. God bless them. Even targeting those on the front lines. But for the medics, it's not about freedom. It's about saving lives. We just need to make sure that we stay the course with social distancing. We don't want to see another surge come in uh, that, that would be overwhelming. And with more than 40,000 Americans dead and thousands still in hospital, another surge would be catastrophic. Joe Hill for 10 News First. A gunman has been killed and two police officers are recovering from gunshot wounds after a public bus was hijacked in Texas. The man took the driver and a female passenger hostage and fired on police through the windows. Police stopped the bus with road spikes and when the suspect got out, he was shot several times and died in hospital. It was later discovered he was wanted in connection to the murder of his girlfriend. It seems lockdown was the last straw for one porky participant in Connecticut. His breakout caught on police body cam. Taking his chances to escape the clutches of pursuing officers, the pig managed to evade capture for a full 45 minutes. But all good things must come to an end. An officer managed to trap him in a rubbish bin and take him to the local animal rescue. The UK's lockdown has meant a very different wedding day for this nurse and her husband-to-be. It wasn't just that their guests appeared via a Zoom call that made it unusual. It was their wedding singer. Oh, Sally Golden. Oh, God. <laughs> Sally Golden. Hey. So congratulations, Harvey and Hayley, and uh, you're both heroes, and we all love you. Their wedding day had been postponed, but as a thank you for Haley's work as a nurse, a wedding planning company organised the whole thing, including Ellie Goulding's appearance. After the break, isolation and Zach's Australians prepare to honour our diggers like never before. And the young brothers who turned their YouTube channel into big views and big bucks. Chef's biggest barbecue ever. Eat them alive. I'm worried for you, mate. Have you got anything cooked? Master Chef, 7:30 tonight. We know how important our weekly specials are to your shop, so in our online catalogue or app, you'll find even more specials this week, like Omo Regular two kilogram or two litre, now eleven dollars. That's half price. We want you to always get your Woolies worth. That feels especially true, given what's going on. It is good to know that our super will help us and our economy bounce back. And if you're with one of these, your super is invested in things that create jobs and keep Aussie businesses strong, delivering good long-term returns that benefit all of us. After all, we're all in this together. 
Introducing the new GS20 Ultra 5G, Samsung's best 5G phone on Australia's best 5G. Available now with no excess data charges in Australia when you add to any month-to-month -month mobile plan. Get smart about housework. Take control with the sleek, new, intelligent Dyson V11 Outsize. Boasting a 25% wider cleaner head, a 150% larger dustbin, and up to 60 minutes of fade-free power, the new V11 Outsize is now available with interchangeable batteries. It's also packed with innovative technology that automatically adjusts motor speed to suit the floor surface. And just point and shoot when you're done. Test drive the new Dyson V11 range now at Harvey Norman. Bedshed are taking 20 to 50% off everything. All beds, mattresses and furniture. 20 to 50% off. No exceptions. Hurry in and save at Bedshed. No one's better in the bedroom. Feed the family with Hungry Jack's new family bundle. Treat yourself with two Whoppers, two cheeseburgers, four small chips, four Cokes, ten nuggets and sauce, only $24.95. Get takeaway, drive through or delivery at Hungry Jack's. If you're a small business, you've probably got a lot more questions than answers right now, which is why there's never been a more important time to speak to a professional accountant. They're specifically trained to help with business planning and cash flow management strategies tailored to support your business through these challenging times. They can even lend a hand with applications for government support to make sure you get the help your business needs. For further support and assistance, contact a professional accountant today. JB's got the hottest deals to keep you connected. Get 15% off Samsung Galaxy S10 phones. Stay connected with this Lenovo Smart Display for $149. And this HP Touchscreen Laptop for $698. Buy in store, online click and collect or get it delivered. JB, you've done it again. It felt like a, like a storm. I was ready to break at any minute. It was like to the core of my body was breaking apart. Sometimes we do need help, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm doing really well mentally. I'm able to, you know, see the sunshine instead of the clouds. 1,200 hunters. Will MasterChef's biggest barbecue ever. I'm worried for you, mate. Eat them alive tonight. The top stories here on 10 News First. Virgin Australia could be ready to go into voluntary administration as early as tomorrow. An emergency board meeting is being held tonight to discuss the future of the struggling airline. WA has recorded no new cases of coronavirus overnight. Despite the positive results, parents and teachers say they still fear sending their kids back to school for term two. And it's feared Australia's unemployment could reach as high as 15%. The Grattan Institute says the jobless rate could spike once six months of stimulus payments dry up. As our elderly dust off their medals, younger Australians are dusting off their musical instruments to commemorate an Anzac Day like never before. Many are working to ensure that generations can stay connected while being apart. Wilf Taylor's march this Anzac Day will be many steps shorter than the decades of parades he has witnessed, even more dawn services. Hardly missed a service uh, back since 1946, that would be 74 years. I think of uh, quite a few of the uh, men I used to know, went to school with, that uh, didn't come back. A 97-year-old World War II veteran, a son and nephew of original Anzacs. He was 19 years and four months when he was killed in Gallipoli. Like all servicemen, he'll this year mark the day from home. Anzac Day I'll be feeling very empty uh, this year. But crucial in protecting particularly our vulnerable generations. Wilfs, the last surviving World War II veteran in his RSL branch. I was 19 in December a year older than his great-grandson, who will also pay tribute from the confines of home. And I'll be thinking about my pop and what he did, and I'll be thinking about his father and his uncle and how incredibly proud I am of them. Across town at Ross Trevor College, the younger generation is banding together while still apart, as students practise an unmistakable musical call... <laughs> to play from their respective driveways. I'll probably be thinking of my great-grandfather and my great-great-grandfather 
and I'll be thanking them for fighting for our country. Lots of them have been playing their brass instruments for many years and, and I dare say this will be one of those moments that they'll remember forever. It should be remembered. I hope after this year it doesn't lapse. Plenty are making sure we never forget. Brett Clappis for 10 News First. Two young brothers from New South Wales have become Australia's biggest YouTube stars, amassing billions of views and millions of dollars. Now the siblings have signed with Nickelodeon, with their new show launching today. At just eight and four years old... Right. These brothers have earned more money than most of us ever will. I started when I was young with just me and my dad on the weekend for fun. But fun quickly led to fame and fortune for Calvin and Kyson from Punchbowl. They're the stars of online channel CKN Toys, where they unbox and review kids' products. Attracting more than 14 million subscribers and 13 billion views, it's estimated their channel has made them almost $12 million. My favourite toys are like Avengers, Nerf. Kyson, what are your favourite toys? Peppa Pig and then Nerf. Now the brothers have signed with Nickelodeon. Hey, I'm Calvin and this is my little brother Kyson. Hi. Their and new show, is... Play Power, Play launching Power. this morning. Whoa! The show that we've created, Calvin and Kyson's Play Power, like complements what they do, but it's not the same. It's like a little bit different, but I think it's a natural progression for them to have a TV show. Calvin and Kyson's parents say despite countless offers of free toys, they purchase around 95% of the products the boys review. Then when they're done, they give them away to friends, family or charities. 19 more episodes of Play Power are set to air this season. It's exciting to have our own show on Nickelodeon. Really happy. Paris Martin for 10 News First. Two littlies with a massive future ahead. Sport is next. Tim, a big name falls in Aussie sport. Absolutely he does. Yeah, rugby league is desperate to restart as it faces crippling financial crisis. But it will do without the man at the helm. Details on the way. Also, Redden, when you are, the Premiership Eagle, ready to get back to work sooner rather than later. And Twin Towers built for the big time. Brothers back together for now, but can't wait to go their separate ways. We chat to the first chef eliminated from the MasterChef kitchen next. 1,200. <laughs> it's the biggest. Ravenous punch. <laughs> MasterChef barbecue ever. Oh, my gosh. It is absolute mayhem. <laughs> Alarm bells are starting to sound. It's too Last... slow. I yeah. know, mate. I'm trying to get it going here, mate. I warned you about this. But will this epic challenge eat them alive? The way that your service goes all relies on the next 10 minutes. I'm worried for you, mate. Have you got anything cooked? MasterChef, 7.30 tonight on 10. Every lotto ticket supports vital grants in WA. And right now, all available profits from every ticket are going into Lottery West's COVID-19 relief fund. Helping to provide much needed support for everyday West Aussies. Show your support for WA. All available profits from every ticket go to the COVID-19 relief fund. Show your support for WA. Search Play Lottery West or call us on 133 777. At Nature's Own, we have spent over 40 years building our knowledge of the body. We know just three millimetres of knee cartilage could be the difference between a night on the couch and a 5k run. And that B vitamins help turn your food into energy. You can be cool! Because the more we understand our bodies, the more we can unlock our natural potential. Nature's own. Be body smart. Online therapy is an easy way for your child to continue their therapy journey. Kites provides a range of creative therapies, including dog-assisted therapy. Kites. Every child, any challenge. From family night to date night to night night. With free delivery for purchases over $2,000. Furniture Bazaar has furniture for every life. Search Furniture Bazaar. Small business is the lifeblood of our community. 
it employs close to 500,000 people. Right now, a lot of those small businesses and the people they employ need our help. So what can we do? Well, what small business really needs is our business. Together, we can help keep small business in business and West Australians at work. Authorised by the State Government Perth. for you, mate. Eat them alive tonight. Well, sport, everyone. After four years in charge of the NRL, Todd Greenberg has fallen on his sword and quit as the game's CEO. Greenberg was widely criticised by clubs for the NRL's dire financial situation only uncovered through COVID-19. He was also frozen out of talks with broadcasters last week. In a statement, Greenberg said, despite the variety of challenges and pressures, I've loved every single minute of the journey. Chief Commercial Officer Andrew Abdo has been appointed acting CEO. Meanwhile, the boss of the AFL, Gillan McLaughlin, continues to prepare for a return to action. Rob Waters is in Melbourne with today's developments. Good evening, Tim. Well, things are gradually improving. The rate of infections is slowing and people seem to be responding to the restrictions uh, put in place by the various state governments and the federal governments all across the country. Really, the first thing the AFL needs to happen now is to convince the various health authorities around the states that it has a manageable plan to work to get football back in order. It, uh, for the AFL, for instance, has met with the Victorian uh, Chief Health Officer and that health officer has laid out a, a plan for the AFL and a structure for the AFL to get back up and going. So we'll hear from him, but first let's hear from the AFL Chief Executive, Gillan McLaughlin. We wouldn't do anything without the Government and the Chief Medical Officer signing off on it. Certainly not, not contemplating staying with the crowds at, at, at the start and I think, I think it's challenging, but we are going very well and things change. Gil and I discussed it in terms of the planning that needs to be in place. He will come uh, formally with uh, some proposals. Uh, my suggestion was it needs to be a national conversation because um, it does relate to how teams can move around the country. Still no response from the Western Bulldogs on its penalties for Lockie Hunter, but there is a development. The Age is reporting that Hunter will voluntarily relinquish the vice-captaincy. You'd think that would be the first step in a range of issues he's confronting. Uh, he is expected, of course, to be uh, suspended anywhere from two to four matches by the Western Bulldogs. He'll face a significant fine, and that's just the, the football penalties. He, he'll also have to account for his actions uh, via the court system. But uh, Hunter no longer will be the Western Bulldogs vice captain moving forward. Good on you, Rob. Rob Waters in Melbourne. Eagles Premiership midfielder Jack Redden believes the wait to play footy is almost over and he's preparing for a speedy return to WA. Redden has spent the past month of isolation in his hometown of Adelaide. The moment the AFL season was postponed, Jack Redden made family a priority. Well, well. We head back to SA just before the borders closed and just scraped in, but we've just been around family. Uh, obviously, two kids now. We're getting the extra hands at home, which is nice. The Eagles on ball are playing parents in a full-time role. I'm um, experiencing the stay-at-home mum life, and uh, I'm looking forward to going back to training. But also made sure his own playground was footy-friendly. Redden desperate to be battle-ready. We want to finish the season and um, 
yeah, contend at the end of the year. Contact with West Coast teammates and coaches restricted to online, but he doesn't need to see the boys in person to be confident they won't be taking shortcuts. If you can stay strong and um, prepare really well and to have success in a year like this, it's a great character testing thing for the group and um, it's be very rewarding as a group. Although there is one player that may stray from the preferred diet. Maybe number nine, he likes a burger or two. When the call comes to resume the premiership push... Yeah, 100% I'll be straight on the plane. It could start here in a hub in the West. If it's deemed safe um, and there's no risk to the community or ourselves, I think the boys will be pretty open to any sort of scenario um, just to get some games out. And Redden says it won't take long to be game ready. I think maybe four weeks would be ideal to really ramp up the training, probably that change of direction, more game-like skills and situations. Uh, I think four weeks will be um, adequate amount of time. Lockie Reed for 10 News First. It's not the reunion Saints or Suns recruiters had in mind, but Max and Ben King are relishing their time together back under one roof. They would rather be playing footy, but after waiting a year to make his debut, St Max is happy just to have one game under his belt. It may not be the case in poker, but in this footy family, a pair of kings equals a full house. Yeah, it's good. It feels like old times again. Um, Mum's pretty happy as well to have us both back. They're among the lucky ones with a ready-made training buddy. Yeah, we put the gloves on last night and, and had a bit of a spar. He got me in the neck. I don't know if you can see, but... <laughs> Competition and comparison are inevitable and the boys believe that will only grow over their careers at different clubs. We both developed a fair bit in our first AFL year, but I feel like we're both still pretty evenly, even physically, so, yeah. yeah. I've noticed he's, he's come back with this thing on his top lip, so um, yeah, that's, that's probably the big difference I've seen. But their journeys have been vastly different. Ben has 15 games under his belt. King! Oh. Big Ben chimes in! While well, Max had to wait an agonising 12 months for his debut. We all dream about what our first game's going to look like, and this probably wasn't how you pictured your dreams. He said some really kind words, and yeah, obviously no one better to, to sort of mentor me and, and help me through my early stages of my career. Wearing Nick Rewalt's number 12, from the old king to the new king. I was pretty grateful just to get the first game out of the way before this big thing, because if I was still thinking about debuting while this whole thing lasted, it would be pretty stressful. Size and strength have always been an issue for the Twins, and the pair are hoping to use this break to bulk up with plenty of weight sessions and mum's cooking to help. Ben actually made a paella the other night for all of us, so... Yeah. Mum was very impressed by that and, and now expects me to start start cooking a bit more as well. So he's come back and shown me up a little bit. Katie Price for 10 News First. T20 World Cup organisers are determined to plough on with the October event despite the complete shutdown of the game. And while Cricket Australia and the players are on another collision course over contracts, star paceman Josh Hazelwood says it will be nothing like the last standoff. This is not something you would have heard from an Australian cricketer during the 2017 pay dispute. Yeah, we're obviously partners in the game and um, we, we've always said that. We've ridden the highs and uh, now it's probably time to, to ride the lows a little bit. Lessons learned from the messy standoff under the old administration mean it won't be repeated this time around. The relationships are a lot better now between, between the ACA and CA and they've developed a long way, I think, in the last... 18 months, two years probably. Player pay cuts are inevitable though. For a sport that had nearly $200 million in cash reserves in 2016, Josh Hazelwood admits to being blindsided by news Cricket Australia could be broke by August. Yeah, it probably took me a little bit by surprise, I guess. Um, just due to the fact that it's um, it's probably happened at a perfect time, I guess, this pandemic for, for cricket. T20 World Cup organisers are determined for that event to go ahead in October, despite a potential risk to players' safety. Um, yeah, you obviously think about it and you take precautions and um, we're no different to, to anyone else. India's test tour immediately after remains clouded. If it doesn't happen, it could be replaced by an Australia versus Australia A series, much like the pre-Ashes trial. It was a pretty exciting game, to be honest. Um, no, one, no one held back at all, sort of spots were on the line. Um, so I guess you'd have that same sort of feel. It's hard to imagine a domestic series would be enough to bail out Australia's favourite pastime. Josh McLean for 10 News First. 
a pro golfer, went head-to-head -head with some of the best Formula One drivers and perhaps, not surprisingly, was a fair way off the pace. Things were a bit rough for Ian Poulter at the Virtual Chinese Grand Prix. He finished in 18th spot and showed why you shouldn't drive with distractions. Oh, look at that now, Lord. No. Oh, you've got me all, all flustered. We've ruined Ian's race. The commentator's curse. Carlos Sainz showed even the pro drivers can find the wall. No such trouble, though, for Ferrari's Charles Leclerc, who won for the second straight virtual race. Now, you would think just being able to play competitive sport would be enough to keep you happy at the moment, but Taiwanese baseball quickly hit that theory out of the park. We could have a big problem here as Sosa's ready to take on the whole team and the bench is clear. You know, for our international viewers, you need to understand that this never really happens in the CPBL. That's not social distancing. Yes, apparently for this league, arguing with the ref is really rare. All in brawls almost unheard of, but while both teams boast a pretty clean rap sheet, we'll still punish them with tonight's spray of the day. Speculation during the media rounds in Perth in the last hour or two that Damien Martin, six-time NBL champion, old man, captain, legend, good bloke, could possibly be announcing his retirement in the next couple of days. We're still working on that one and might have more after six. Until then, thank you, Goss. Michael Schultz is next with how our weather's looking for the week ahead. How the coronavirus crisis is providing a glimmer of hope for the homeless. 1,200 <laughs> ravenous punters. <laughs> Will MasterChef's biggest barbecue ever eat them alive? I'm worried for you, mate. Have you got anything cooked? MasterChef on 10. It continues 7.30 tonight. At Domino's, we've introduced a number of measures to improve our safety. Our zero contact delivery means that you can get a tasty meal safely delivered without ever having to leave your home in search of other options. We've also been working hard to feed the frontline of doctors and nurses and supermarket workers. We're playing our part to keep Australians safely fed. After all, we're all in this together. Even though we need to stay inside, we can still keep moving. Even when you're not outside, you can still move like you are. Because even when space is limited, you can still move without limits. Did you do this? If you're moving and want a great gas deal, just call a Linter Energy. When it comes to any property, it's what's inside that counts. We understand that the true value of any home is the life inside. Everybody has a great story to tell, and mine is anything but ordinary. My name's Helen, and I'm a writer, content creator, and entrepreneur. The new Surface Laptop 3 is light, elegant, and powerful, and with Instant On, it's always ready to go. You never know when inspiration is going to strike. From writing in a park to creating content on set, it's perfect for my busy life, and I just love the new metal finish. The new Surface Laptop 3 truly is anything but ordinary. We always wanted a spa, but how would we install it? The crane over our roof didn't thrill us. Then we discovered Soft Hub Australia. Soft Hub is a portable spa, great for balconies and roof terraces. Simple is better. Join AHM Hospital and Extras Direct and you'll get six weeks free. Plus, we'll waive any two and six month waits on extras. Yay! Whether you're a single, a couple, or a family. It's that simple. Ah, uh, that doesn't look very simple. Offer ends June 30. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit.
Hello there. We've got several dull days coming up and if we're going to get any rain it's going to be fairly light. Even in the southwest corner these weak cold fronts that are moving through at the moment are going to struggle to produce more than a few millimetres. So the city's maximum today got to 24.4 degrees. That was at half past one. The overnight minimum 10.3 at 18 past six this morning. It's 20.4 now. The winds are westerly at nine kilometres an hour. Barometers fairly steady around 1,014.7 hectopascals and the relative humidity 61%. Cool morning around Perth, 9 degrees at Guildford and Jandicott, 8 degrees at Dwelling Up. Highest maximum close to the city was 25 at Bullsbrook in the Swan Valley and further north at Lancelin. The lowest maximum in the state was 19 at Carnot, so pretty close to Perth. Highest maximum was 41 in the far north Kimberley at Wyndham and the lowest last night was 4 degrees. That was recorded at Wandering and at Newdigate. Nine millimetres at Pingrup was the most rain in the state in the 24 hours up until nine o'clock this morning. There were a few other light falls, including three millimetres at New Norcia. The satellite images show a low off the northwest coast. It's not going to develop into a tropical cyclone, but it's feeding some moisture across the state uh, down into South Australia. And you can also see tonight's weak cold front brushing along the southern coastline there. As that goes through, there is a gale warning this evening from Cape Naturalist across to Bremer Bay and a strong wind warning goes further east to Esperance. But tomorrow, with that next cold front approaching the southwest later in the day, a strong wind warning has been issued for the area from Cape Naturalist across to Hopeton. Rainfall tomorrow. The showers in the southwest should be southwest of a line from Lancelin to Bremer Bay. Even then, they're more likely closer to the coast, and falls even around the southwest corner are only going to be around two to three millimetres. And there is the chance uh, out of that cloud band that you saw on the satellite images of some isolated showers uh, through the uh, northeast of the Gascoigne, uh, the northern gold fields, and maybe even the southern interior. Uh, but falls in those areas are expected to be light also. The major centres across the north there'll be a reasonable amount of sunshine but Bunbury out of the shower or two you could get up to three millimetres tomorrow. They're just saying partly cloudy for Albany, Esperance, even Kalgoorlie could get a little bit of cloud before a mostly sunny day. Geraldton will be partly cloudy and Newman also. The others should be mostly sunny. 39 expected in Kununurra and 22 in uh, yes in the southwest at Albany. For the nation, Adelaide should be partly cloudy. Melbourne and Hobart partly cloudy. The rest should be mostly sunny. 17 expected in Hobart, 25 in Sydney and 34 in Darwin. The westerlies on local waters will be around 10 to 15 knots. They'll be going northwesterly during the morning. During the day, they'll increase to 15 to 20 knots, uh, seas around a metre. Early in the day, the southwesterly swell three to four metres. Later in the day, a west to southwesterly swell of two and a half to three metres. High tides a little over one metre at 25 minutes to 10 in the morning, sunset at 11 to 6. Forecast for the city is for the chance of a shower overnight and early tomorrow. Tomorrow will be mostly partly cloudy. We're expecting the winds to become northwesterly in the middle of the day, a minimum of 14 and a maximum of 25. Wednesday, another cold front goes through, possibly bringing us a shower or two, maybe 0.4 of a millimetre. The minimum should be 17 and the maximum 25. Thursday, Friday, partly cloudy, 24 degrees. More cloud on Saturday and a top of 23. Then Sunday and Monday, we're expecting tops around 24. As we all continue to isolate and socially distance, the number of new coronavirus cases across our nation continues to decrease. The curve is flattening each day, with only 58 new cases of the virus diagnosed since Thursday. That brings our national total to 6,522. And while that is a promising sign, authorities are reminding us to remain vigilant. Australia's second airline, Virgin, looks set to become the first big corporate victim of the coronavirus pandemic. Administrator Deloitte was appointed late this afternoon. Claire Dirl has been following the story and joins us from Perth Airport. Claire, what is the latest? Well, Monica, the Transport Workers Union released a statement a short time ago pleading with the federal government to work with administrators and save the estimated 16,000 jobs on the line at Virgin Australia. Now, the airline itself is yet to release a statement, but it's understood they went into voluntary administration late this afternoon. They'd been struggling with around $5 billion in debt. They'd requested a $1.4 billion bailout from the federal government, but that request was rejected. 
It's understood accountancy firm Deloitte will be appointed as administrator in the coming days. The news of Virgin's demise has sparked fears airfares will will skyrocket if Qantas becomes our monopoly airline. Now it is eerily quiet here at Perth Airport tonight. A Virgin flight touched down a short time ago. The crew on board, some of the thousands of staff whose jobs are now in limbo. Mon? OK, thanks for that, Claire. Teachers and students will be subject to random coronavirus tests when they return to classrooms next week. It's part of expanded criteria being rolled out as the state attempts to eradicate COVID-19. No new coronavirus cases today and only two recorded over the weekend. So these are encouraging numbers, especially considering where we were a few weeks ago. Of WA's total 545 COVID-19 patients, only 103 remain infected. I know it's easy to think that we've succeeded and we can just get back to normal, but we need to continue to be very cautious. We cannot get complacent. Takeaway booze limit restrictions have been lifted and students will return to classrooms next week, despite many parents, teachers and medical experts opposing the idea. In theory, we could undo all the good work that we've done in these last few weeks with our social distancing by changing the whole paradigm. What we'd like to see is a more managed approach that talks about a gradual return of students. The government fighting back, telling parents they should only send their children if they feel comfortable doing so. Uh, we have a total of um, 68,000 people working in schools private and public across Western Australia. At this point in time, there's been one of those people uh, has been detected with an infection. Our low infection rate means targeted testing will now be rolled out. We are looking to do a population-wide study around asymptomatic patients because they're, the they're the next subject that we want to get our teeth into. Students and teachers will be some of those tested under the expanded criteria. Police, fly-in, fly-out and healthcare workers also part of the cohort. Nathan Brooks for 10 News First. Europe has passed a grim milestone in the battle against COVID-19, recording more than 100,000 official deaths. Tens of thousands more deaths are thought to be coronavirus related but have not been reported as such due to other pre-existing conditions. Across Europe, signs are improving that the worst may be over, with both Italy and Spain recording falls in their infection rates. But one royal doesn't believe the optimistic picture being painted is realistic. What has happened, especially in the UK, is, I mean, it's, it's, it's the very best of the human spirit. You know, things are, it's also proving that I think things are better than, we've, than, we, than we're led to believe through, you know, certain corners of the media. At least 16,000 Britons have died of coronavirus. 120,000 have been infected. A Geelong doctor has spoken out after being targeted in a sickening racist attack. Ern Chang wants to raise awareness about an increase in abuse since the COVID-19 outbreak. Ern Chang has embraced every element of being Australian since emigrating here from Singapore 12 years ago. Hey, good day, Frank. Yeah, Dr Chang. He runs a family medical practice in Geelong, putting him right in the firing line of the COVID-19 pandemic. Stay in your car. Yeah, I'll come up with mask and gloves. He knows the dangers of COVID-19, but he didn't think he'd be a victim of sorts when a woman approached him near his regular cafe. Look straight at me and said, you shouldn't be here, you should be at home, why are you here, F off. And she repeated that a couple of times, got in a car and says, I bet your name's Lee, isn't it? Ern was hardly shocked. Many of his Asian friends and colleagues had told him about the increase in racial abuse since the coronavirus outbreak. People just walking by and, and abusing them just for being there. Ern's wife Michelle encouraged him to post his experience online to raise awareness and help others. This virus is, is, is not a, a cultural thing, it's a, it's a human thing. The Facebook post was met with mass applause for the GP. The couple says it's more important to unite communities than target people who make racist comments. We don't know what's going on on the other side of the table. We don't know what they're going through. The Australian Asian Alliance has received 178 reports of COVID-related racism in the last fortnight. That's roughly 12 complaints per day across the country. The number of actual incidents 
is likely to be much higher. Really harmful and I think goes against the values of the Victorian community but it's also against the law. Next time it'll be somebody else, somebody else who looks different. So I don't think that has a place in our society. Natasha Rex will be for 10 News First. Canada is in mourning and demanding answers after the country's worst mass shooting in 30 years. At least 17 people were murdered by a dentist dressed up as a police officer who then went on the run for 12 hours. Well, this is the deadliest mass shooting in Canada's history after a dentist dressed up as a policeman and went on a shooting rampage that lasted more than 12 hours. Uh, police believe that 51-year-old Gabriel Wartman began with a clear motive last night when just before midnight he shot dead several people in a home in rural Portapique, Nova Scotia. But then they say it turned into a random killing spree. The gunman was on the run all morning going from scene to scene, killing random people and setting fires to some of the crime scenes. Here you can see two police cars that were on fire by the side of a highway when he managed to escape capture. But it all came to a dramatic end at a petrol station with police killing Canada's deadliest mass shooter. Among his victims was Constable Heidi Stevenson, a 23-year veteran of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and mother of two. Like here in America, Canada has a relatively high level of gun ownership, but mass shootings are much rarer. Uh, Canada's constitution doesn't guarantee the right to bear arms, so this will no doubt add fuel to the fire calling for tighter gun controls. But right now, Canada is in mourning trying to come to terms with one of its darkest days. A violent brawl in Pinjarra last night has left two brothers in Royal Perth Hospital with serious injuries. The fight broke out just before six yesterday evening after a group of men confronted people in a Mackay Street home, Mackay Street home. Police say poles and bats were used as weapons as the group fought on the street. Three men were taken to hospital, one suffering a fractured skull. Officers are now speaking to a total of ten people who they believe were involved. Four children are accused of vandalising a war memorial in Carnarvon. It happened around eight last night. Police managed to clean most of the graffiti, but it will need specialised attention before Anzac Day. That is obviously a, a very disturbing thing for all Australians, and particularly veterans, to uh, learn of a war memorial being desecrated uh, and damaged. The children, the youngest just 11, will be charged with criminal damage at a later date. The federal government plans to force digital giants Google and Facebook to pay more for the cost of news. The big platforms are accused of profiting from advertising without paying for content. Now, unless news is taxpayer funded like the ABC or SBS, all the news you read or watch is ultimately funded by advertising or subscription. But increasingly, people find their way to news content like this through Google or Facebook, and they don't pay directly to produce it. The government says something has to change. But we understand the challenge that we face. This is a big mountain to climb. These are big companies that we're dealing with, but there's also so much at stake, so we're prepared for this fight. The government commissioned the competition watchdog, the ACCC, to look into these issues. It reported back last year and it found more than 19 million Australians, almost everyone over the age of 13, used Google every month. Nearly 18 million use YouTube, which is owned by Google. 17 million use Facebook and over 11 million use Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. The ACCC found news outlets have no real option but to share their content through Facebook or Google. And that gives digital giants enormous power in the market. And coronavirus has further raised the urgency level. Nearly 80% of businesses have either cut back advertising or stopped it altogether. And that means just when the nation needs news more than ever, the money was drying up to pay for it, regardless of the platform. And it's called into question the adequacy of our existing regulatory frameworks and the viability of traditional media outlets. Journalism matters. Journalism is vital in a democracy. But journalism costs money to produce. Now, there were plans for a voluntary code by the end of the year, but the government has lost patience. It wants a new mandatory revenue-sharing arrangement drafted by July. Now, TEN's Chief Content Officer, Beverly McGarvey, says for the new code to be truly meaningful, it needs to cover all premium content, not just news. 
Facebook says it is disappointed by today's developments, saying it spends hundreds of millions of dollars globally supporting journalism. Google says it will continue to work constructively with news producers. Once again, though, we're seeing the government using a crisis to try to push through some pretty big reforms. Goss is back with sports. Some big-name Aussie soccer stars are calling for change. They've pulled no punches. Monica Koss, thank you. A host of former soccerers believe there is no time like the present to reboot the struggling A-League. Hear their thoughts soon, but things look positive for the AFL. Newsy's helping get your kids into science during self-isolation. Plus, without your leg warmers, aerobics Oz style is back. Next. At ANZ, we're here to help you get on top of your money. So if you need a hand banking from home, support through the ups and downs of business, or to ease the pressures of your home loan, we're here and ready to help. Glen 20 has been helping to protect Aussies for generations. But we're not the only ones. Meals on Wheels protect our most vulnerable every day. You see, they're much more than just food delivery. They offer wellness support and a connection to the community. An invaluable service that's needed now more than ever. So to help them protect the people who need them, we're offering our support. And we're asking for your support too. When life gives you sauciness, Godfrey's gives you cleanliness. Ivac Steam Mop, $59, save 40. Hoover Zenith Stick Vacuum, $299, save 100. Godfrey's cleanliness. Cookie people, cream people, crumbs people, clean people, twist people, lick people, dunk people, munch people. It's on the play, people. If you twist, lick, dunk, then you're my people. We are Oreo people. When headaches hold you back, try Nurofen Quicksorb. Its advanced formula absorbs quickly, relieving headaches fast. For quick, effective pain relief, choose Nurofen Quicksorb. Hi. My name's Bert, and I'm a big fan of supercars. It's my job to make sure everything's clean. The cars, the fuel, the track. You can't get the top performance if it ain't clean. That's why I only use BP Ultimate. Keeps the engine clean so it stays at top performance. Every lotto ticket supports vital grants in WA. And right now, all available profits from every ticket are going into Lottery West's COVID-19 relief fund. Helping to provide much needed support for everyday West Aussies. Show your support for WA. All available profits from every ticket go to the COVID-19 relief fund. Show your support for WA. Search Play Lottery West or call us on 133 if dry or flaky skin is causing you frustration and embarrassment, try E45 Cream. It soothes and relieves by creating an effective barrier to protect against skin dryness. Feel comfortable in your skin. Switch to E45. At Bunnings, we're here to help with some simple projects you can do while you're at home. Like sorting out your wardrobe storage. You can shop online, order what you need, and we'll bundle it up for you. It's like having the warehouse at your fingertips. At Domino's, our first priority is the health and safety of our team members and customers. That's why we are now offering zero contact delivery. So you can get any large pizza from $15 delivered with total peace of mind. 1,200 <laughs> ravenous punters. <laughs> Will MasterChef's biggest barbecue ever eat them alive? I'm worried for you, mate. Have you got anything cooked? Master Chef, 7.30 tonight. Rocky Hunter has voluntarily handed back the vice captaincy of the Western Bulldogs after crashing into four parked cars under the influence of alcohol last week. Meanwhile, the Adelaide Crows are likely to hand Tyson Stengel a multi game ban after the young Adelaide forward was reported for drink driving. Tyson Stengel will have to face the music after blowing well over twice the legal alcohol limit behind the wheel of an unregistered car. But his coach says the club is prioritising the forwards' mental health before handing out any bans. I know Tyson's probably the most disappointed person and, and probably slightly embarrassed about, the, um, about what he went through. Um, hopefully for him it's a learning experience, um, something that 
um, you know, he's a young he's a young kid, um, and he's had a fantastic preseason. So for him, it's a it's a really big setback. Meanwhile, AFL boss Gil McLaughlin says it's unlikely crowds will be welcome back at any point this season. I think that that's going to be challenging this year. It doesn't mean it won't happen later in the year, but I think it's a challenge to have you know, at all this year. The league is set to announce a target return date early next week. There are 16 rounds plus finals still to be played, but don't expect a grand final as late as New Year's Eve. We have enough time and we are, you know, we'll get a season that has continuity and, and finishes before then. What we're looking at, I think, doesn't finish that late and it's only if we had, you know, Unforeseen circumstances, I think. And David King has called on Port Adelaide to guarantee Ken Hinckley his job for next year. A finals clause in his contract could see him sacked if Port failed to make the eight. But King says judging the power coach on this season would be unfair. What does Keith Thomas do? Does he go to Ken Hinckley and say, "Look, we can't, we can't assess you on this year. We, we can't. Let's 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 just take let's just take that trigger off the table, and let's just accept that you're going to go to the end of 2021. If you don't endorse that person, how, how can they how can they stand at the front of their group at the moment? Josh Money for 10 News First. Australian players are determined to work with Cricket Australia to avoid a repeat of the 2017 pay dispute. There's only 10 days left before the new contract deadline. Josh Hazelwood says he and his teammates are expecting a drastic pay cut to help save the game. It's, it's a lot different for everyone and it's going to affect more uh, some people um, more harshly than others and, and others are in a better position. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be different for everyone. Meanwhile, organisers of the T20 World Cup on home soil say they're determined to press on with the event in October. Several Socceroo greats believe Australian football has been in turmoil for a decade and needs drastic changes. Six players from the Golden Generation got together for a Facebook chat and they did not hold back. It was a Golden Generation reunion of sorts. We haven't had this group of guys together for a long, long time. So it reminds me a little bit, bit about the time when we used to be... Uh, uh, stuck in hotel rooms. <laughs> Half a dozen Socceroos greats discussing the hot topics surrounding the game in Australia and shooting from the hip. Can you finish this sentence? In the past decade, Australian football has gone nowhere. It's at a crossroads, John, in, in, in my opinion. It's not perfect. Of course it's not perfect. In 2005, it was John Aloisi's penalty which put Australian football on the world map, qualifying for its first World Cup finals since 1974. But lately, the conveyor belt of Aussie superstars on the global stage has disappeared and youth development was the focus. Are we missing out on some of the people that can't afford it? We're hearing that they're, you know, they're, they're loads or they're not able to play 90 minutes. They can only play 60 minutes. The FFA closed the centre of excellence at the Australian Institute of Sport in 2017, mainly due to a $1.6 million annual cost. That program needs to somehow uh, be born again. The AIS basically made me as a player. Next in the firing line, the A-League. I don't think um, the quality of the A-League is, you know, improving. The A-League is like watching it's a knockout. <laughs> 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 That's not on anymore, Dukes. The discussion even had current players sharing the view that things have to change. I do feel there's a lot of improvements in football to be made. Um, engaging the community, getting bums on seats. Michael Kane for 10 News First. Fierce rivals often referred to as tennis's three musketeers. Novak Djokovic, Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal are taking on an all-for-one, one-for-all approach to coronavirus, setting up a fund for lower-ranked players financially hit by the pandemic. Having pledged over $7 million, the big three are urging the ATP and Grand Slam tournaments to pitch in for players ranked from 200 in the world to around 700. The men's and women's circuits have been suspended until at least mid-July. Now, you would think just being able to play competitive sport would be enough to keep you happy at the moment, but Taiwanese baseball quickly hit that theory out of the park. We could have a big problem here as Sosa's ready to take on the whole team and the bench is clear. You know, for our international viewers, you need to understand that this never really happens in the CPBL. Yes, apparently for this league, arguing with the umpires and the refs is really rare. All in brawls, almost unheard of. But while both teams boast a pretty clean rap sheet, we still punish them with our spray of the day. Not sure saying spray of the day is quite 
at, at the moment with what we're going through. May I say, hey, tomorrow night we're going to catch up from with Adam Simpson and Lockie Reed will be working very hard catching up with Damien Martin on his future. There is some speculation. He will announce his retirement this week from the Wild Cats. We'll see you then, Goss. Yes. A mild week ahead weather-wise. Michael Schultz is more after the break. Yes, he um, big miss. He'll be big loss. The biggest ravenous punters. <laughs> MasterChef barbecue ever. Oh my gosh. It is absolute mayhem. <laughs> Alarm bells are starting to sound. It's too slow. Yeah. I know, mate. I'm trying to get it going here, mate. I warned you about this. But will this epic challenge eat them alive? The way that your service goes all relies on the next 10 minutes. I'm worried for you, mate. Have you got anything cooked? MasterChef, 7.30 tonight on 10. With McDelivery, Macca's comes to you. With contact-free options, you can enjoy all your Macca's favourites, delivered to you via the Uber Eats app and Deliveroo. When cold and flu symptoms strike, a kiss can make them feel better. But for effective relief through the night, there's Nurofen for children. Starts to reduce fever from 15 minutes and lasts for up to eight hours. Nurofen for children. At Bunnings, we're here to help with some easy projects you can do while you're at home. Like finally setting up those shelves in the garage. You can shop online, order the essentials you need and we'll bundle it up for you. It's like having the warehouse at your fingertips. Oil Deluxe Crisps from Red Rock Deli. What happens to all the dirt on your dishes? It flows in your dishwasher, affecting its cleaning performance. Add Finish In-Wash Dishwasher Cleaner, the only one that cleans your dishwasher while it cleans your dishes. Try Finish In-Wash Dishwasher Cleaner today. Do you have heartburn or indigestion? Gaviscon Dual Action relieves them both. It works fast, two ways. It neutralises excess stomach acid and it forms a protective barrier to help stop stomach acid from rising. Gaviscon Dual Action. There are two ways to make a mattress. The cheap way, one piece single-sided with attached pillow top made out of foam. Yes, Mr Harvey, they should be 50% off. The best way, two piece, double-sided, removable pillow top with thousands of micro coils and a five year comfort promise. Sorry, Mr. Harvey, we make them, you don't. The Bellissimo mattress, made like no other mattress. Making mattresses, nobody makes a better mattress. Nobody. If dry or flaky skin is causing you frustration and embarrassment, try E45 cream. It soothes and relieves by creating an effective barrier to protect against skin dryness. Feel comfortable in your skin. Switch to E45. Across Australia, we're all playing our part to stop the spread of coronavirus. I'm doing my part, and you can too. We can catch up online with friends and family and virtually grab that drink together. We can head back to the beach when it's safe to do so and meet at a friend's place another time. But for now, let's keep doing our bit and stay home. Together, we can help stop the spread and stay healthy. To find out more, visit australia.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Up next, COVID-19 lockdown is working to save lives, but hundreds of thousands of Aussie jobs have gone. The challenge of striking the right balance. Plus how the coronavirus is providing a small glimmer of hope for Australia's homeless. And our chat with the first eliminated MasterChef cook is on the way. The project next. Good evening. We're going to see a lot of cloud over coming days. Very little rain, if any, and temperatures are going to be cool to mild. The satellite images shows a band of cloud across the state from the northwest across to the Euclid Division. There's some patchy activity associated with that. You can also see a weak cold front around the southwest corner. Since 9 o'clock this morning, the best rainfall total has been 2 millimetres at Carnot and a few around the southwest and lower west coast of 0.4 of a millimetre. 
on the rainfall model for tomorrow. Uh, another weak cold front is going to approach the southwest corner. So southwest of a line from Lanceland down to Bremer Bay, there could be some isolated showers. They're more likely to be coast, close to the coast and rainfall totals will be low. The winds are going to pick up around the southwest corner. There is a gale warning out from Cape Naturalist to Bremer Bay for tonight. Tomorrow there's a strong wind warning from Cape Naturalist across to Hopeton. On our waters, the winds aren't going to be that strong. They'll be westerly, 10 to 15 knots. They'll go northwesterly in the morning and freshen to 15 to 20 knots during the day. Seas around a metre. The swell getting up to three to four metres in the morning. In the afternoon, a west to southwesterly swell will be closer to two and a half to three metres. In the city today, 24.4 was the top. The overnight minimum was 10.3. It's still 20.4 outside. The winds are westerly at 11 kilometres an hour. Barometer just under 1,015 hectopascals and just rising ever so slightly. Relative humidity 60%. It should be a milder night and daytime temperatures will be close to the ones we recorded today. 21 expected at Mundaring and Dwelling Up, 24 at Joondalup, Mirabuka and Cardinia, 23 at Armadale and the warmest should be 25 at locations like Bullsbrook and at Guildford. The city tomorrow should be partly cloudy. With the weak cold fronts going through to the south, there is the slight chance of a shower, but we're unlikely to record any significant rainfall. The winds will become northwesterly in the middle of the day. We'll drop down to 14. Tomorrow's top should reach 25. On Wednesday, there's a slightly stronger cold front, so there is the chance of a shower or two getting to Perth, but the Bureau is suggesting we'll get less than 0.4 of a millimetre. The top should be 25. Thursday and Friday, partly cloudy and 24. Saturday, we'll see clouds sweep down from the northwest, a top at 23, and the chance of a shower or two then too. It's a bit iffy, messy, isn't it? It is a little bit of this neither here nor there. I'll work on it. Stay tuned for the project. Enjoy your evening. Good night. Tonight, COVID-19 lockdown is working to save lives, but hundreds of thousands of Aussie jobs have gone. The challenge of strike.